Alrighty then guys, this is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. Today we're going to fire more Amonkhet Remastered, explore some more archetypes in the set. Not that there is there is anything beyond blue-black control um, and um, blue-green ramp, but um, it's, it's mostly going to be an aggressive archetype if we do want to increase our win percentage chances. So yeah, beyond... Beyond the, the very few control decks in this set, there's really not much diversity, so we're gonna mostly gonna end up in some sort of exert deck. Um, if we do draft the set, I guess there's blue red, but blue red I guess can be aggro or controlling, but usually in this set you want to be very aggressive even if you're playing blue red spells. But yeah, we'll see. I always like pack one, pick one of a draft, and um, navigating the first few picks. It's what makes draft really fun, because the very few picks kind of determine where your decisions are and which direction you're kind of heading to. Not that you want to overly commit to a strategy, but you always want to lean towards a strategy if you open up like a multicolored bomb of some sort. Alrighty then, pack one, pick one, Amonkhet Remastered Limited, um, let's begin. Alright, well that's a pretty easy bomb, I mean, Oketra the True is very excellent, um, obviously can't attack or block unless there's three or more, and you can just generate 1-1 creatures all day, and a 3-6 double strike is almost really difficult to deal with. Not saying the bombs, the gods are... Um, unbeatable because there's cards like final reward and um the um the um the the removal spells enchantment based removal that can deal with it but um it still requires a very specific answer other great cards include lay came claim burning fist minotaur kendra kendra's charioteer best commons include gus walker and cartouche of ambition if Oketra the True wasn't in this pack it would be a pretty interesting choice between burning fist minotaur and gus walker um but uh, both cards are excellent um, aggro creatures, but um, here it's just an easy Oketra. White is also considerably the best color in the set, so we will definitely be drafting some sort of um, go-wide aggro archetype with white. And uh, white does keep us most flexible. Alright, um, after Oketra True, there's an um, interesting option between Labyrinth Guardian, Splendid Agony, and the Hooded Brawler. Um, there's also Leave the Chance, but I think it's a little bit um, too slow. Um, it's not a bad card though, um, but usually white isn't trying to be very grindy, um, which this is the ability he's trying to do. So between all these three cards, um, I guess there's also Sifter Worm to consider, but that's more of a card that you're looking to do if you're looking to, to ramp. Um, with Oketra the True, we just want to be very aggressive, so which card do we want? Um, there's, I mean, I was looking at the power rankings, I think, hmm, hmm, I think, hmm. Um, I think we could just maybe take the Hooded Brawler here, although Labyrinth Guardian is an uncommon, so it's a little bit more difficult to get, and maybe we can end up in some sort of a blue, white, and bomb deck, and that's not bad. Um, Splendid Agony is also very good if you want to be more controlling archetype, or if you want to be in black, white zombies to deal with the minus one, minus one counter synergies, but um, Labyrinth Guardian is pretty nice, just a decent two drop you can get early, and then you can reanimate it later for four mana. Um, here between Dauntless Aven, Magma Spray, and Unquenchable Thirst. I could just take an Unquenchable Thirst here. Ruthless Sniper is also very good, but you need to be in a much more um, cycling-heavy archetype with this. Um, it's definitely the most most powerful card in the pack, but it just doesn't play well with um, Oketra the True. It does play very good in like a blue-black control deck, I guess, so I could consider it. But um, taking after taking a Labyrinth Guardian, um, I don't mind just taking an Unquenchable Thirst here. Um, Dauntless Avon is also pretty decent if you were playing lots of Exert creatures. Um, Magma Spray, also very good common. But, um, yeah, I think here we're just going to take an Unquenchable Thirst, stick with blue for now. Um, now I can just take my Magma Spray. Some excellent Cartouches, Cartouche of Ambition, Cartouche of Strength. There's also a Hieroglyphic Illumination if I want to stick with blue. 
I guess this is our chance to maybe kind of stay open. I think white-red aggro is the best archetype. And even if we don't end up in white-red aggro, we can still be in like blue-red spells with a magma spray. And that's also a great archetype. And I just want to take my magma spray here. I don't want to give up on white. Um, that being said, we are seeing a blue-black cartouche here, obelisk spider. So there's a chance that black can actually be open. Oasis ritualist is also a consideration. But I think we're just going to lean towards the path that's not going to be drafting black. Since black wants to be a little bit more controlling. Well, we want to keep our options for white as open as possible. Okay, I could just take a random Desert of the Mindful. It does help with the Unquenchable Thirst as a premium desert. Um, other good aggressive cards include Thresher Lizard, um, Tormenting Voice is okay. Best card in this pack is like Naga Vitalis. Mango Horde is also pretty decent. There's a very... Actually, there's not a lot of artifacts in this set. Um, there's the God Pharaoh's Gift that on turn 7, but that's really expensive, so we don't know where or not we're going to end up targeting this. Let's, t let's just take Desert Plays while the Unquenchable Thirst. Um, could take a Sunset Pyramid, okay, hmm, that's a pretty late Sunset Pyramid, it's a nice late game card. There's also Winds of Rebuke if we're gonna do the whole Embalm Synergy thing, and that's also pretty nice. Um, but I think the Sunset Pyramid is just a better card. It's for a more controlling deck, of course, which, you know, we, st we still, Blue-White isn't necessarily a more aggressive archetype, it's kind of like a little bit mid-rangey, so... It's fine having cards like Sunset Pyramid, but Naga Oracle, Winds of Rebuke, can help self-mill, and that can um, fuel the Embalm synergies if we pick up it, any more Embalm cards, but here we're just going to take a Sunset Pyramid. Ooh, Talk Crop Elite, I don't hate a Talk Crop Elite, decent 4-drop, um, can exert it. Um, I do want to keep myself open to white if I can. Um, yeah, it's a nice exert creature if you're looking to go wide and attack. It's pretty decent. Winds of Repuke is also fine. Splendid Agony, also really good. Let's just take the Talk Crop Elite. Easy Fan Bearer, nice uh, one drop. Although there is a um, Labyrinth Guardian, a second copy. I think I need my first. I think I want to cut off white a little by just taking this Fan Bearer. Because, um, again, I just want to make sure I end up playing Oketra. And it's still a pretty decent card, you know. Too generic to tap a creature down. Seems pretty good. Um, there's Soul Stinger as a decent ground blocker. Could just take a Floodwaters. There's not too much cycling synergy in um, White Blue. But even then, we don't have too much of minus one, minus one counter synergies. So we just we can just take this Floodwaters here. Um, could take a Countervailing Winds. Um, or Winds of Rebuke if we're going to be in White, Blue, and Bomb. Which I don't hate. Let's take a Winds. And we can take another Desert. Maybe I just take the White Desert here to maybe cut off White a bit. Um, so, White doesn't seem particularly open. I mean, we did see a late Fan Bearer. Um, blue seems very open. Black seems open. Red did, didn't seem too open besides the two Magma Sprays were being passed. Green also seems open as well with the Naga Vitalist and the um, Cartouche of uh, Strength and the... Um, Sifter Worms and um, Naga Vitalis being passed to us. So there's a chance that green could actually be the more open color. Not sure if I'm going to play a spell. We release Supply Caravan can be a fine ground blocker. Not big fan of Hecma Sentinels, but I can play it if I want. Uh, don't mind a Curator of Mysteries. Looks like a pretty excellent curve topper. I mean, 4 mana 4-4 four, four is actually just a very good stat line for a flying creature. Um, and you can also cycle this too. So we could be in white, blue, and bomb with a bit of cycling synergy, and I don't hate it. Um, alternatively, there is uh, Omnis Sphinx, which is a good curve topper, but a little bit worse than the Curator of Mysteries. Uh, pretty decent still. If you end up in with some cycling synergies, you can um, basically uh, nerf the opponent's creature's top uh, power. Um, other good cards, there's Gus Walker in this pack that we could use, um, Oasis Ritualist, Obelisk Spider, and Enigma Drape, but we're just going to take a Curator of Mysteries, just a really powerful 4-drop. Ooh, God Pharaoh's Gift, although there's an Aerial Guide. I mean, God Pharaoh's Gift is hard to pass up, but we do need to ramp into it, because 7 mana is a lot. Like, it's still not unreasonable playing this in, like, um, White Blue, otherwise I would take the Aerial Guide, but um, I think this card's strong enough that I just have to take it. Gotta take another fan bear here. Decent um, one drop that can tap things down. There's also Hope Tender to help us ramp, but I think we're gonna commit to white blue for sure. Although we don't have too much white blue synergy. Um, hmm. Could take a vizier, could take a random wall. The wall isn't bad, especially with two deserts. This is a good ground blocker and a way to help 
um, close out the game by pinging the opponent. Um, best card in this pack is like Splendid Agony, Riddle Form, but Riddle Form, we're not really that type of deck. We're, we're going to focus more on creatures more than anything else, so this wall does get better. Could just take a random Vizier here as a decent ground blocker and a creature that we don't mind cycling for, with the Curator of Mysteries. Actually, I could also consider the Floodwaters in this deck since um, we, ought, we do have the Curator to synergize with it. Just take the Vizier. Ooh, Vizier Deferment. I don't hate that. There's also um, Essence Scatter, late start to finish. Vizier Deferment can be pretty good, um, especially if we can free one of our creatures from enchantment-based removal. Uh, we don't have too much Exert synergies, but it's a decent creature that we don't mind using. You can also use this on the opponent's creature to prevent it yourself from getting hit by it, so I don't hate it. It also fills a decent gap at 3, although not a good 3-drop ground blocker. I think it's still okay. I still think it's a very good card, and it's white, so it's it's good. Um, I could just take a random Disposal Mummy. There's a compelling argument we could cycle. We're not really a Zombies deck for the unconventional tactics. Let's just take a Disposal Mummy. I'll take a Desert here. Ooh, Lake Gustwalker. Okay, so we managed to cut off white a bit. Um, that So that allows white to be slightly open. I'm happy seeing a Gustwalker pretty late. Pretty excellent 2-drop. We can always cycle this for two. Camel doesn't seem bad in this deck. Okay, uh, could just take another Camel. I don't think we're aggressive enough for Mighty Leap. Yeah, I don't think we're really an aggro deck. We're just trying to help um, stall out the game. We're more like white-blue control more than anything, where we're trying to like, gum up the ground with um, good ground blockers, and then um, removal spells, good ground blockers and get the late game so we can close it out with flyers and the god pharaoh's gift but this deck seems uh pretty pretty decent okay well that's a bomb crested sunmare easy choice although we don't have any life gain synergies. I guess with the Solidary Camel, it can be pretty decent. Um, this set doesn't really have too much life gain, um, but uh, White does have a bit of life gain synergies with the one one cat stack and embalm for life. Um, again, the Solidary Camel can maybe connect and gain life, but um, yeah, I can't really pass up a five mana five five for the most part. That has a high upside. Otherwise, Oketra's Avenger would be a pretty excellent two drop. Shimmer Skell Drake, decent late game card that can help us close out. I'll take a Crested Sunmare. Um, can take a Striped Riverwinder. We are a controlling deck, so I don't mind taking this. Although, we don't really have Ramp, so we can still cycle it anyways. It's not the worst. And it's pretty decent if you can put a Cartouche onto this. Like a blue or white Cartouche. Um, I can just take my random Cycler, although there's a Hollowed one, which has some decent cycling synergy, but... Uh, yeah, it's not bad, but I don't really want to play this as a 5-mana 4-4 wall if I can. But it's actually not that bad. Um, how many flyers do we have? 1-2. Could use an extra top-end flyer like the Shimmer Scale Drake. But the Hollow One can be a decent ground blocker. Although, we're going to cast this for 5 anyways if you think about it, since if we cycle this... Um, if, you even cy if you cycle the card for 2 and play this for 3, then it's going to be 5-mana, so it's not really that exciting. Let's just take a Shimmer Scale Drake. I think it's fine enough. Now we can take a Compulsory Rest. Oketra's Monument is also quite good. There's a Cartouche of Knowledge. Um, how much removal spells? Um, I guess we do have the Unquenchable Thirst. Winds of Rebuke. Double Fan Bearer. I could use more removal. I don't hate taking it here. Cartouche of Knowledge also pretty decent to give our creatures flying. But we're going to try to fly over in the late game anyways. So I think we'll take a Compulsory Rest. That's also late deem worthy to keep in track of. I think the Aerial Guide has to be better than the Tawcrop Elite here. Um, Oketra's Monument, pretty strong too, but I think I don't mind having an extra Flyer that can help some of these ground creatures get across the finish line. It's also very efficient to cast. Don't mind just taking a good Desert here. We have a couple of Deserts. Oketra's Avenger, although we're not really the deck for it. I could just take a random Impeccable Timing. I mean, the Akechra's Revenge is also pretty good, the Aerial Guide. I'm not even a big fan of the Impeccable Timing. I mean, this deck is looking to be very controlling to get to the late game, so Impeccable Timing might actually be the correct pick here. 
Um, yeah, let's just take Oketra's Avenger. Um, I could just take a Countervailing Winds, although there is just another Striped Riverwinder we could cycle for one. I don't think I'm milling the opponent, and just a 1-mana Cycler is usually better than a 2-mana Cycler, at the very least. I cut the disposal of mommy. These threes look fine. Twos look solid. I don't mind the wall. I don't mind the sunset pyramid. S supply caravan can maybe go, although it can block. It's not very that exciting since we have stripe river winders in the late game anyway. So this is around 24. I don't know if we can go to 16. We probably have to go to 17 just to, um, I guess we can cut the flood wire since it's a two mass cycler. Not sure much life gain with the Crusted Sun Mare, but still fine mana 5-5 five, five that I don't mind playing. In terms of our creature count, 17 creatures seem fine. Again, we can always cycle the Striped Riverwinder if we don't get there. And the game is just going to be like a very controlling game where we just try to drag the opponent out to the late game and eventually get to our God Pharaoh's Gift. We can also cycle towards the God Pharaoh's Gift if possible. Um, so, that's not bad. Oketro the True is already um, a... Um, win condition in and of itself. So yeah, this Crossed Sun Mare doesn't seem good, but it's just, I think a 5-man 5-5 five five is still a very strong body, so I don't mind it. It's a really good ground blocker as well. Even another Desert Late. Okay, so unlike the typical blue-white Embalm deck, where we're playing lots of Embalm creatures, this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, we're going to mostly focus on controlling and blocking and getting to the late game. I actually think we should maybe cut the um, Winds of Rebuke, although it's an interaction spell. We don't really want to mill ourselves. We only have like one um, embalmed creature, so it doesn't seem that great. In terms of interaction, again, double fan bearer, unquenchable thirst, and a, um, I believe there's a compulsory rest in this deck. Um, let's see. Um, and then, uh, we can maybe tech in a cycling card in this deck. Maybe we can take a compelling argument. Flood water is also pretty decent. Um, yeah, I think we have enough good ground blockers. We don't need to supply caravan. We do have a random like disposal mummy on three, but I don't think I why well, I think I just want another cycler um, to cycle away. Um, yeah, I don't mind just taking compelling arguments here. Like, the game, other game plan, alternative game plan is to, again, cycle our, our creatures to maybe, um, um, to help scribe the Curator Mysteries, or to reach our God Pharaoh's Gift. Um, we also have a decent number of deserts to cycle away, so usually the less, if we're going to be playing 16 lands, the more deserts we have, the worse the deck gets, I think. So I think we can just keep it like this, um... We're slightly favoring um, blue a little bit more, I think, because we do want to cycle away our compelling arguments. So 9, 4, 5, so 9, 8 seems pretty decent, and I think we need to play 17 lands again with all these deserts. Um, we do need to uh, get there, I think. Um, yeah, I don't really want to self-mill myself too much, so I don't want the winds to rebuke. We should have okay interaction. Let's try this deck. It's not typical. I kind of had to just uh, squeeze through this draft. Um, I think we're, the right choice was to, was to maybe be in blue-black cycling, but I really couldn't pass up a pack one pick one Oketra the Avenger, the true, I mean. Um, also red didn't seem very open, so... Um, although I red-white exert is the best archetype, um, it didn't seem very open, open this draft. And the green cards want us to ramp instead of um, exert and beat down, so I'm actually quite happy we're still in blue white um, so let's try this I think we have an extra space here yep the Zori's control let's try this deck out actually I could consider renew fate I don't think we're milling the opponents actually it's too mad to cycle I just want to have as many one mass cyclers just to make the deck very efficient one mass cyclers are usually better than um, two mana cyclers obviously so we just want to play these compelling arguments to cycle to our late game. And again, I don't mind playing 17 lands, even Volley Cycler, since I do want to cast the Stripe River Winders um, and um, get to our God Pharaoh's Gift on turn 7. So I want to make sure I at least have 7, man seven lands in on the battlefield before I um, cycle away my deserts. 
but overall seems fine. Alright, um, I guess we can always cycle the striped, our first striped Riverwinder. I don't hate it. It does make our land, hitting our land drops quite better. And, and then once we get to land 7, we find our God Pharaoh's Gift, we can cast it and the striped Riverwinder will come out. We can just reanimate their striped Riverwinder anyways. I can always just Unquenchable Thirst to Dread Wanderer. Like, it's not that bad. It's already tapped already, so... Yeah, I don't really want to trade off my Solidary Camel or flicker it, which is, which is Thirstus, so it doesn't become a nuisance later on. Hmm. I could flash into Vizier. Although, I could just cast a Solidary Camel to maybe trade for it. I mean, this didn't gain life, so it does have synergy with our Crest's Sunmare, but how much do I care about that? Probably not. Let's just play it. Actually, I could have played out the Vizier. Maybe I should have, since the Vizier could also... We could have just taken three, and this could have ramped out our Curator of Mysteries. And if he decides to lock down our Solidary Camel, Lethal Sting, that's fine. I guess he can get this back now. That sucks. Alright, I guess I didn't get any value from using the Unquenchable Thirst. But that's fine, let's just play out of the Vizier. Maybe we'll force him to exert, we'll take 5, then we can always just cast our Curator of Mystery next turn by um, untapping the land. Nope, no exerting? Hmm. I think I'm blocking if he's not going to exert. I don't, I don't care if he uses a removal spell here or a pump spell. At least I, I make him use it. Okay. This can allow us to hit our land drops when we scry. Sifter worm, okay. So I do need to f find my. F I do need to fan bear and tap this down per turn, or I can use the vizier to uh, kind of um, to deflect the damage for a turn. Hmm, so I could cast my Shimmer Scale Drake. I'll be taking 7 from this Sifter Worm. I think I'm attacking for 4 in the air for sure. So I don't mind just playing out the Fan Bearer, or I can just play out the Wall. Actually, I don't mind just playing out the Fan Bearer, untapping with the Vizier, uh, untap, it with, untap the planes with the Vizier and flash into Vizier here. Um... Let's, let's try that. And we can even ambush a 2-2 if he tries to exert it. So that's not as bad as I think. And it doesn't seem like he has a Splendid Agony, so we'll see. If he's going to exert this, I could just ambush this 3-3. Three, three. I mean, it's a little bit too risky, I think, trying to ambush the three-powered creature. Yeah, I think I just um, used it. I oh, I think I think I should have done. No, actually, yeah, let's decline. Uh, that was a huge mistake. Um, I guess I can just take ten. I could have flashed in. I could have um. Ah, darn, I messed this one up so badly. I should have uh, blinked my own Curator here. I, I realized I, I shouldn't have um, blinked the Sifter Worm because he was just going to gain life. Let's just take it. I messed this one up really badly here. This is a com I hope this doesn't come back to bite us, but it probably will. And our clock is a lot slower against the Sifter Worm, so... 
Crested Sunmare, we can ramp out, I guess. Um, and what, we can s trade for the Sifter Worm? I don't really want that. Um, let's just... Maybe just play out the Shimmer Scale Drake, maybe. Um, we could just chump this Sifter Worm, or I'd just play out the wall and then tap down to 7-7. That's not bad. This is going to be a pretty slow clock, but I think we can maybe get there. Hopefully. You could have a splendid agony at instant speed here. Probably a splendid agony end of turn. Yeah, I guess he had a removal spell in the first place. Hmm, just so this doesn't look great. I could untap the curator and triple block this to finish it off. Like, that's not an unreasonable play, right? Because I don't know if I can afford to take 7 here. I could chump block with a wall, maybe. To absorb some damage, maybe this is okay. Got Pharaoh's Gift. Well, that would have been that would have been great if we could have casted it. So this turn, I think we just ramp out the Sun Mayor here. Hopefully, for, hope for the best. And then we can trade it, the Vizier and the Crested Sun Mayor for it. Or, or I can double block it with the Curator. But I think I think we have to keep everything back here. I actually, I, actually, I could just take three here. But um, with all the creatures on Valve, I think we need to like set some sort of double block. I totally messed this game up. I should have flashed him. I mean, I guess if I flash in the Curator to block the 3-3, three, three, um, he had a Splendid Agony to finish this off, so it wasn't even that great. Maybe I should just flash in the Vizier to negate damage from the Rona Starwart. Starwart, but here I'm going to double block the Sifter Worm, and hopefully we don't get punished. Okay. Maybe he's going to step and attack next turn. I'm definitely going to double block the 7-7 seven, seven here. I mean, I get 2 for 1, so I could just double block like this. And decide whether or not he wants to kill my flyer and still 1 for 1, and I still keep my 2-2, two, two, which is important. Okay, Rider kills a Sun Mare, makes sense. Plan is good. We can eventually get to our um, God Pharaoh's... Um, Gift, but we could attack for 4 in the air now and untap the Curator of Mystery, so Vizier is actually really useful in this matchup. I can cycle away to Soketra's Avenger. But I don't mind just clocking him for 7 in the air, and I can always just untap my flyer to block, so let's just do this. Kinda dodged a bullet in this game because I think I messed it up. Um, okay, final reward, sure. Not much I can do about that. I can always just untap the Shimmer Scale Drake and block the 2 2. So this is gonna slow our clock down, but it's fine. Also, Soketra's Avenger is not so great in this board since he has a 4. Toughness creature and also the 2 1 can um, chump it for days, so we're not out of the woodworks yet. We're both sharpshooters, okay, that's annoying. So maybe we need to play the defensive game now. I'm hoping he exerts this and he doesn't realize I can untap. Got free kill there at least. Talkrop Elite isn't bad. Say go. I can exert a Talkrop Elite and allow him to take four. Although he, I think he should have enough ground blockers. I think I just need to cast a God Pharaoh's gift to maybe help win the game. 
I'm definitely double blocking this. Um, okay, land is good. Now we can cast a God Pharaoh's gift here. So nice late game insurance in case our flyers get blanked. And we can cast our... Hmm. Yeah, I think it's just game over here. Strangely enough, we didn't find a single desert this game. To have lifelink with our desert camel. So it didn't get punished by the tap lands, but we were getting mana screwed a bit early on, even the 17 lands. So I do need to play out these deserts quite aggressively. Okay, no deserts, okay, but a solid curve, I'll keep this. Don't mind just cycling the compelling argument next turn, I'm not really looking to mill the opponents. No, I cycle at instant speed, so there's no need to use it yet. I can just use this to tap down whatever aggro creature he plays, and then I can cycle this next turn and be mana efficient. That's a creature I don't mind just um, tapping down. Oh, Catcher's Avenger. Hmm. I don't mind just unquenchable thirsting this, or compulsory resting it. Maybe we'll thirst it since it's tapped, um, and we don't have any deserts. And then we can always just cycle away this um, compelling argument, end of turn. Keep back the 1-2 to hold off the 1-1. Just not taking any unnecessary risk or damage in this matchup. I guess he can always um, keep haste of that, and we can just lock that down with Compulsory Rest. Sure. Or I can just use the um, Activate Ability of the Fan Bearer. Curator is not bad. Hmm. Yeah, let's just drop the Curator. Probably gonna exert the Kenra Scrapper and get in, which I'll be taking four. But hopefully, I can um, help stabilize the matchup. Pathmaker, pretty annoying with the Kenra Scrapper since he can give it unblockable. But again, we still have access to this Fan Bear, which can start tapping things down, so it's not that bad. I'm just hoping he doesn't play any scary haste creatures here. Okay, that's gonna gain haste. Alright, he's going to get in for a huge chunk of damage this turn. I can still block off the 1-1. One, one. He can get me in for 5, so... I guess I can double block the Kenro, but he's going to exert it mostly. So I'll be taking 7 down to 11. Not an amazing life total. Okay, I guess this can't block anyway, so we won't block it. Talk crop elites, although not very mana efficient. Um, hmm, now what? I could cast a compulsory rest. I think I'll compulsory rest away um, the Kenra Scrapper since it just doesn't deal with activated abilities, and if I use it on the um, Pathmaker Initiate, he's just going to. Um, He's mostly going to um, use this as an activated ability. The question is, do I attack him for four? 
Um, I don't think I need to since this can always block the 3-2 and I'd rather have the activated ability in case he plays a large creature paste. So I think I'm still going to stay back here and play defense. Unfortunately, none of these creatures are good ground blockers. I could just play out the Catcher's Avenger and offer a trade for a turn. Like, if he plays out a large creature, I can just tap it down and offer the Catcher's Avenger to trade for the 3 2. Some of these cards don't really play good in the control decks due to the high toughness. I guess I can he, can he can give that haste. Um, he can make a creature unable to blocks be blocked, so I'll be taking three anyways, regardless. Um, yeah, I guess that resolves. Okay, um, so I'll be taking four, I guess. So I do need to sure up the ground with enough blockers so I don't get overrun. You can use this on the Blowless and Sire, but that doesn't matter because um, I'll be taking four anyways, even if I tap this down since this will be unable to block. So Hopefully the opponent just runs out of steam here, and then we can eventually just scum up the ground with enough creatures and ways to tap things down. We should be okay. Alright, we'll just pull out the Avenger here. I think I'll still keep everything back. I don't think I can afford to attack still since he has a lot of these 3 2s that are getting trying to get in there. Does he have another cartouche? This guy seems to love these cartouche of zeals. Dauntless Avon, okay. Hmm. So most likely he's just going to tap to make this unable to block, but I don't mind just tapping it down. I mean, he's. He's going to tap to give this haste, and then he's going to make it unblockable with the 3-2, two, two. so I think I'm tapping this down. And he doesn't have any valuable attacks. If he's attacking the 3 twos, I can just trade them off and block off the, another 3 twos. so I think we're still in decent shape. God Pharaoh's Gift, okay, just two more lands. Let's just put out the Gust Walker here. Question is, do I attack with a 4-4? Four four? Like, I don't hate just attacking the 4-4 four four here since I don't mind just trading off my ground creatures. They're not going to mount to much anyways, so I can attack in for 4, use the fan bearer to tap down the 2-1, and then um, trade both of my creatures for these 3-2s. We should still be in decent shape here. What I'm scared of is if he top decks something and plays it. And I'll be taking some unnecessary damage, which you know I should have played around since with two cards in his hand, it's most likely that, you know, he does have a creature to play maybe. Zealot. I actually don't mind him giving haste to Zealot. I don't mind actually just trading for it. Since a 3-1 can line up nicely, I can just take 3 from a Pathmaker Initiate, or I can just take 2 from a Dauntless Avon. 
because even if I tap down, let's say the um, the three two, he's just gonna tap in response to make two one unable to block. So I don't mind just taking three. I have some good trades here, so it's not that bad. I don't mind just killing the Zealot because if I do, then he won't be able to use the activate ability, so I'll just take three here. It's a little bit risky, but I think I have to do something like this. Striped Riverwinder, I think I have to cycle that. This is a little bit too expensive for the cost, so let's just cycle it now. Um, Shimmer Scale Drake. Don't think I need it. Let's just bomb it. I just want to get my land so I can play out my God Girl's gift and win the game. Vizier, hmm, we can always use this to untap and then um, um, ambush one of his creatures. So I don't actually hate just cycling the Vizier. It's also two mana, so I don't mind just attacking here. We can ambush one of his creatures by um, by cycling away the Vizier. I think I'm going to tap down a 2-1 here, um, and then um, ambush a 3-2, I think. Since in the long run, I think the uh, Pathmaker Initiate is going to be the bigger problem. And I can just take one here, unless he has some a random compact trick that he managed to um, find. Definitely want the land to hit my God Pharaoh's gift. I'm hoping he doesn't have anything here. Like if he top decks like a brute strength, um, I guess I'll just be taking two. But this is a pretty much a free kill here, and then he has no more evasion here. So we're in good shape. Desert, I don't mind playing. How much lands is this? Five. Um, but I think I need to cast a desert here. I don't mind just casting a talk properly. I'm not going to attack with anything. Just just keep everything back, so then I can um, block the flyers and then um, hold off the ground creature here. So this this is fine. You can sacrifice two to gain two life, but who cares? Um, I'm not really looking to race him anyway. So we managed to get rid of Pathmaker Initiate, so we should be free from um, from any uh, random um, evasiveness. So we should be fine here, I think. We can then use the God Pharaoh's Gift to get back, like, I don't know, the Striped Riverwinder, or maybe Gustwalker, or the Vizier. The Vizier is pretty nice, since that can also just untap. Alright, I can always cycle away the desert, let's just play out the God Pharaoh's Gift. I could just play out the Gus Walker and exert it. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's just do that. And I should have enough flyers anyway, so. Or I could, just, I, I could just attack with it without exerting. I think that's just better. And I can also offer the Taw Crop Elite, I think. Nah, let's just keep it back. I just want to get in for four. And I can always just cycle away the Desert of Truth since I'm at 7 mana already. I can reach the Oketra's Avenger. Alright, we got him. Yeah, some of these cards aren't really great in the control deck. Um, yeah, I don't really like the Oketra's Avenger except on like turn 2 or something. But at least they can maybe trade off. Like the Tall Crop Elite is obviously not amazing. But with enough cycling, we should be fine. I could consider the Renew Fate, maybe the Supply Caravan. Unfortunately, I can't cycle this. And it's, and it's pretty expensive on turn 5. Heck, Hecma Sentinels I could consider, but it needs to get pumped. It needs cycling to, in order to get this pumped, so it's not that great as well. Let's just keep it as it is. And hopefully we can get away with this configuration.
Okay, I can play out the Desert into Labyrinth Guardian, and I can just cycle away the Drake. Don't have any white mana, but I think this is an okay keep. We can eventually find the white mana over time, so I'm, we should be okay. Could have considered just cycling the Drake maybe to hit my land drop, but we can do that next turn. Alright. I think I need to play out the desert here. Um, do I cycle the Shimmer Scale Drake? Um, guess I don't mind, since I don't think I'm going to be... Um, since next turn maybe I can cast Sunset Pyramid with like the Oketra's Avenger. He's forced to exert this again for three. Three damage is a lot though, so I should be careful here. Okay, sure. Well, this is going to be a little bit annoying since um, the Oketra's Avenger doesn't really block it profitably. I could just flash in the uh, Vizier next turn maybe to ambush it. Not to ambush it, but to um, deflect away the uh, Cartouche of Ambition. Like, that's not a bad idea. Alternatively, he's just an Exert of Rona Stalwart. Yeah, let's let's try that. Let's um, I mean, actually, I should need to hit my land drop. Maybe I'm fine taking four here. Yeah, let's just cycle this compelling argument. I think no lands. Well, that's not great. I guess I'll just play out this Avenger and hopefully um, I'll just take four and hopefully I can stabilize from there on out. It's not very good though. Alright, down to 14. 13, I mean, so I could I could be dead to any number of uh, large creatures here. Another Star Wars that we can trade, at least. Alright, um, yeah, let's make sure we hit our land drops this time. Cycle this away. Finally a land, so now what we can do is we can play out the Fanbearer. Then play out the Gustwalker, I think. Sure. Wish this wasn't. I wish this couldn't turn into a three-three because I would happily um, trade my Gus Walker for it. So we're definitely not in great shape. Okay, he does, he didn't exert it, so I'm quite happy. So let's just do this instead. God Pharaohs. Wall of the Forgotten Gods, not that great. Um, I guess I can always just cycle the Stripe Riverwinder here, since I don't think we're ever going to cast it. Talcrop Elite, not what we're looking for. Um, let's just keep this back. Um, he's going to attack with this. I can flash into Vizier. Um, and then, if he decides to... Yeah, I can flash into Vizier. If he decides to exert, I guess I can just, yeah, flash into Vizier and um, get rid of the Cartouche and then trade for the Vizier for this. It's not that bad. Um, because this would get rid of the... Actually, no, he would still keep the exert stats bonus, so I, I could just... Yeah, I need to flash into Vizier to block the 3-3 if he decides to exert it, so... A number of things can go wrong, but I think it's fine just um, trying this out, because otherwise I don't think um, that's going to be a problem. guess I can just deflect it for a turn, and I'd rather just flash this in to get rid of the cartouche, so this is fine. More flyers, okay. Curator can maybe block this off. Just play the controlling game here. Trial, drawing a bunch of cards, okay. Hopefully no essence scatter. Alright, 
hopefully there's no way for him to deal with this curator mystery mysteries or else we're in trouble. And hopefully I can just deploy the Sunset Pyramid and start um, drawing cards with it. Because I do need to eventually get to um, the God Pharaoh's Gift to maybe help stabilize here. Corner Kudu, okay. Probably complete counters onto itself. If I play out the Sunset Pyramid, draw a card into land, I can play out the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. So we're probably going to do that next turn. And our win condition was probably just getting to the God Pharaoh's Gift here. Defiant Great Maw, okay. So that's a pretty de difficult creature to deal with. Um, I guess I don't mind just playing the Labyrinth Guardian. Actually, it's just going to put it onto itself. Okay, it's a pretty neat combo, but fortunately we have enough blockers. Let's put out the Pyramid. I could just play out the Wall instead, maybe. Yeah, the Wall gives us an extra blocker. Maybe I just play it slow. Then we can say go here. Next turn we can start drawing cards and play out the Labyrinth Guardian. And if he doesn't have anything here, we're in decent shape. Ooh, there's our God Pharaoh's Gift. Okay, just need to hit our land drop. Let's uh, draw a card. Play out the Labyrinth Guardian. I could have actually just played out the Fan Bearer, but this is still fine. It's just mana efficient here, and we can start pinging the opponent with the wall. End of turn. Opponent is flooding out a bit, so that's good for us. I could upkeep Scry, but that's going to use up 2 mana anyway, so I don't think I'm going to Scry. I think card advantage is better than Scrying at this point. Okay, there's our God Pharaoh's Gift. Here we can just bring back the Taw Crop Elite. Yeah, and just, it's just game over at this point. Alright, 3-0. Not bad. Just get to the late game with our uh, God Pharaoh's Gift, which, you know, it's not very easy in our deck given that we're playing all these deserts but um as long as we can help stabilize the ground against aggro we should be fine so yeah let's move on Um, we can cycle away the compelling argument, and we have an extra draw step, so I think this is okay. We also have Oketra, so once we're able to cast her down on 4, we can just start making chump blockers. Festering Mummy, not what I want to see early on, so opponent's going to be pretty aggressive here. Okay, let's just play land, cycle the compelling argument, end of turn. And then maybe, hopefully we can just play out the Gus Walker and trade for this. Or we can just take 1 and keep it back in case there's a 2 toughness creature. So black green minus, my, minus one, minus one counters, okay. Labyrinth Guardian, okay. Mm. Gus Walker versus Labyrinth Guardian. I guess the Labyrinth Guardian has a good block on the 1-1. One, one. So if it gets a minus one, minus one counter, I'm okay with it. Obviously, this will force them to exert the Ronas Stalwart. But I think it's a risk I'm willing to take. Let's take three. And I could just cycle away the compelling argument, play the Gus Walker next turn. Ooh, that's a good card. I guess the Avenger can uh, trade off for it, but this is a definitely a, a house of cards since he can just um, draw cards off of this all day. So I guess now the 1 1 can start attacking can, since um, it can put minus 1 minus 1 count on the Avenger. But the 3 1 still blocks the 3 3 profitably. Um, yeah, I guess I'll be taking one damage from this Festering Mummy since I don't really want to, um... Whenever you put one or more minus one, minus one counters on... Yeah, I guess I'll be taking one here. Let's just trade this off. Because I don't really want him to make Death Touchers. Mm -hmm. 
Oketra is great, um, but I can't attack or block with it unless I have three or more. So that's going to be a bit of an issue. Um, I could attack with the 2-3 and ambush him with the um, Vizier of Tumbling Stands. Um, hmm. It's going to be a little bit suspicious, so... Hmm. Let's just... Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit too suspicious. Let's just play out the Solidary Camel here. Um, and just say go. I could just set up a board, I think, maybe, and then like play out uh, Oketra the True. In the meantime, I'll be taking one per turn, which isn't great. I can also just trade this off for the Exert creature. I won't be gaining life, but it can be okay. Sure. A little bit annoying. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. I guess if he decides to attack with this, I can still block it off, so that's not that bad. It's going to trample over, but I don't mind just trading this. And I have enough blockers to deal with the, um, the uh, Vizier next turn anyway, so this is a pretty solid 2 for 1 for him. Suncrested, yeah, Crested Sunmare is quite nice, but I think I need to gum up the ground with some creatures in case he, um, in case he, um, finds a removal spell, so I think I need to set up a board here. Okay. So luckily I didn't fell for it and go for a double block, so... Just lost the creature. Not Still not in great shape, but we're still fine. Let's just play out the Crested Sun Mare here. We just want to um, make sure this 2 2 doesn't keep connecting. The question is am I fine with him making a 1 1 Death Toucher? I guess I don't mind since I can just trade off the. Um... Okay. Well, that's going to be a little bit tough to deal with. Guess I'm forced to chump this. Yeah, I'm not in great shape. I guess I'm forced to chump. Bezo Ketro can't block or attack here. I mean, I could just play her, so next turn we can just activate this ability. I guess I don't mind that. I mean, if I guess, I guess if I get land, I can activate Oketra and play out the Labyrinth Guardian, so I should have enough to block. This is a really gross card. I have some ways to deal with this. I do have um, the um, the uh, Unquenchable Thirst against this, and also the um, what should I call it? The um, Compulsory Rest. He's thinking whether or not he should just use Feet to draw a card, I guess. Which I'm fine if he does. Hmm, okay. So I can activate this once. And, um, make a 1-1. One -one. So I don't mind just playing out the Sunset Pyramid here. And I can just make a 1-1 chump blocker with this to hold off the 11-11. 
I don't think I have a choice. I think I have to block this, block this 4-4. I think he knows about it, but I think I have to do it here. I mean, alternatively, I could just take 4 here. I don't want him getting in forever, so let's just block like this. He might have, like, a Splendid Agony here. Yeah. Okay, so this is not... Unless we can find like a removal spell to top deck, we should we should be in trouble. We're we're gonna be in trouble here. So I can activate this. I guess I just activate this to draw a card, and then activate the catcher to true to uh, make a one one. Might as well play the desert tap since I can activate this twice eventually. Yep, we're down in good shape. We'll be taking uh, a lot, and we'll be just making death touchers all day. And we're forced to chump this Lord of Extinction unless we can find a removal spell. This is indestructible. I think he's just going to do this just to um, make another 1-1 one -one Death Toucher. Yeah, I don't think the opponent realizes he can just go for an all-out attack because I have enough ground blockers. Yeah, I think he's trying to play around things, so he's playing a little bit safe here. But that will give me enough time to maybe find um, a removal spell for this Lord of Extinction. Guess I can now activate this twice, which isn't bad. I guess I'd rather just play a Labyrinth Guardian here since I can at least block off a 2 2. And I can make a 1 1 Chump Blocker for the. Um, for the Lord of Extinction. You can draw a card with the Mouth to feed. Oh, does it get trample? No, it doesn't gain trample. He's just gonna use this to gain a bunch of life. That's that's fine with me. I'll be taking two from the Death Touchers, and or three with from the uh, Festering Mummy. Oh, I guess. Yeah, I guess I need to. I guess I'll kill a snake here and then block like this. This makes sense. Fan bearer is pretty decent. Okay. So I can I can actually make two chump blockers here. Okay, that's not bad. Let's just do that and let's just make two chump blockers, I think, since I can still block with Oketra the True if I do so. Surprised he didn't attack with the Lord of Extinction. Um, yeah, I think a block like this makes sense. Actually, hmm, let's think. Yeah, a block like this makes sense, I think. Um, this is indestructible, so I can block the Lord of Extinction. Yeah, this makes sense. And Oketra is also indestructible. Sure. You can put a minus one, minus one, minus one counter on Oketra, but she's still indestructible here. And then he's forced to attack every single turn because um, otherwise I'll just make a million one ones and outvalue him.
opponent's at 50 life, so this is going to be a pretty long, grindy game. We need to get back past 60 points of um, 50 point of life, so hopefully I can find a removal spell for this. But I still think I'm just going to make a bunch of 1-1s one and block off the 6-6 six -six with the 2-5 since it's indestructible. Um, I could cycle away the desert. I think I'd rather just activate the Sunset Pyramid. The Striped Riverwinder isn't that bad as well. And then we can use the Fan Bearer to tap down. So I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna use a Fan Bearer to tap down the 1616, I think. And I can just make a bunch of 1 1s. Or I just play out the Shimmer Scale Drake and make a 1 1 and draw a card. I think that's better. Yeah, let's just do that instead. We can, e we can also just cycle away the desert. Or cast it. I actually, I actually don't mind just casting this. Yeah, let's just do that, and then we can draw a card, and then use the fan bearer to tap down the sixteen sixteen. That's fine, I'd rather have him put it on the flyer than the Oketro the Avenger here. Aerial Guide, not bad. Hmm. So I could just win the game with Aerial Guide maybe, um, but I do need to be very careful. So what if I cast a Strike Riverwinder? I guess I can still tap down the... Um, I can still tap down the... Um, 1717, and then I can just keep everything back and draw a card end of turn. Seems fine. I should have drew a card instead. That was an accidental misclick. Yeah, fan barrel isn't bad. Although I could just bottom it. Um, let's bottom it. So it's almost essentially like drawing a card towards our God Pharaoh's gift. Yeah, a thirst is great here. We can just cast a thirst. Now we can cast maybe the Aerial Guide, or I can just draw a card, let's just draw a card. So maybe I should have kept it on top. Ooh, that's not bad. And now I can start pressuring him because I, because I think I really need to. I could have also attacked with Oketro, but Oketro is another good ground blocker we could use. So we just need to start swinging in the air and help close out the game that way. Sure. Don't think I need to tap anything down, we should be in fine shape. I could have scryed on my upkeep. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I guess I can just make 3 one ones. I just move to combat. Get in for 7. We'll just get in with all of these. I think we should be fine. I think I, I just need to find a way to help close out the game, so. We should make enough one ones to stay safe, and the 2 5 can always hold off the 4 2. I guess I can make two one ones and then tap something down and scry, so that might be a little bit, sa a little bit safer.
Luckily, the opponent doesn't have any final rewards. Sure. I guess I'll just tap down the uh, Greater Sandworm here. Sure. Unfortunately, Festering Mummy isn't that great of a card. I actually don't mind him just attacking. Eh, let's scry on my upkeep. I guess I can always just tap down a 1 1. So let's scry here. Once we get God's Pharaoh's gift, it should be game over, I think. Island, we can bottom. I guess I can just cycle away the desert here. Let's just cycle it. I think I need our desert at this point. Play our land for Oketra. Move the combat. I think I, think I can get in with the flyers, and I can just tap down the one one. Attacking for nine per turn, I'll eventually get there. So I should be in decent shape here. We can tap something down, stick up, and still make two one one tokens, I think, so we should be in decent shape. Tap down this festering mummy so you can't put minus one minus one counters everywhere. I guess the wall can hold this off, so what, what, I don't think I really need to tap that down. Yeah, I guess the wall could have blocked it anyway, so there was really no need for me to um, do much there. And again, we're just going to scry on our upkeep. Talk crop elite isn't bad, just another nice ground, another flyer in the air. Sure, let's keep it. We can now just play out the, um, go to main, play out the talk crop elite, tap down the 7-7. Um, seven, seven. I forgot to ping him end of turn, geez. Yeah, that was a huge misplay. Actually, not that huge, um, because eventually maybe these flyers can just close out. So this is good. But I think I have the opponent locked down for sure. Another Striped Riverwinder, not bad. Hmm. I don't think I really need to cast it though. This is just a ton of mana. So, hmm. Yeah, let's just move to combat. I think this time I can keep the 2-3 flyer back, hopefully. Do I want to exert this? I don't hate exerting it, although it just I'd rather just attack. Yeah, let's just do that. Keep the flyer back, make a bunch of 1-1s, one tap down his creatures, seems strong. Seems solid, I mean. Yeah, let's just pass a turn.
Yeah, Alcatra's just a bomb. So busted and broken. Alright, two turn clock, I think, so we should be fine. Let's scry on our upkeep again. Don't think we need a desert, let's just bottom it. Ooh, Curator, seems good. We can still tap something down, make a 1-1. One, one. Let's just move to combat. Yeah, this game is just over, I think. I don't think I even need to scry. Yeah, there it is. There's our, um, there's the game over here. And let's move to combat. Um, yeah, the Gus Walker can fly, right? Although the Solidary Cam Camel can gain life, so I, th I think I'd rather just revive the Solidary Camel here. Move to combat. Um, this will be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, this should be lethal. If I exert, I think. 4, 5, 6, yeah. Alright, currently 4-0. Deck is definitely overperforming beyond my expectations. Usually, yeah, again, I said it before, but um, blue-white wants to be the embalm deck where you're trying to eternalize an embalm, but um, this deck is actually just going to be, um, uh, again, it's just a more con just a control deck, essentially, getting into late game, but playing Oketra as our um, late game win conditions, as well as Flyers and the God Pharaohs. Um, gift so it's functioning quite well even against even at six life against like a lord of extinction lord of extinction that was beating down we managed to stabilize all right seems good no deserts so they're gonna come and tap for the most part could cycle away the vizier but the vizier does help us ramp which i do appreciate Yeah, probably, I probably, I can get him for one here, I think, yeah. Probably don't need to, um, cycle the Vizier. It might be very useful to help ramp out the Sun-Crested, this Crested Sun Mare, so I don't actually hate just casting it next turn. Let's just cast it. I can kindly take three here, which I don't mind, since I can just play out the Crested Sun Mare. I could block this, mm, could have blocked it, but that would have risked losing my Vizier, so now what we can do is we can... Don't th I guess there's a Pouncing Cheetah at 3, so I should be careful and not attack with the Fan Bearer. Because if he flashes it in, he will just kill it for free, which I don't want. Burning Fist Minotaur is a bit annoying. There's a God Pharaoh's Gift, so one more land and we should be good. I think I'm just going to keep the Crest's Sun Mirror behind as a good ground blocker. We can play out the Aerial Gun and start attacking next turn, hopefully. Um, and I can tap down the Burning Fist Minotaur if he decides to attack. So just don't want to take any unnecessary risks. We have the late game covered already.
Yeah, I don't I don't mind him just using the um, trick here. That's fine. I mean, the Cr Crisis Stuntmare would have been a better blocker, but I'd rather just have him use his tricks ASAP. Compulsory Rest isn't bad. I guess we'll just do that instead. Um... Yeah, let's just do it on do it on this creature, and then we can just attack in for seven. Yeah, seven is a lot. I don't think I can afford to not attack here, so we'll just do that. We can still take grief in the Ronis Star Ward if he if he decides to exert it, or I can flash in the Vizier and um, ambush the Ronis Star Ward. We can always do that next turn. Let's just tap down the Burning Fist Minotaur. Again, just don't want to take too many unnecessary risks. I can afford to take two or three, and then I can just close out the game with the flying, the aerial guide, and the um, destined to lead. Okay, we're definitely going to tap down the um, six five here. Um, but I think I'm still getting in for seven. Or I can use a vizier as a um, as a removal spell. Now it's a removal spell as, um... Yeah, as a flash creature, I can, like, flash away the Burning Fist Minotaur. Okay. <clears throat> sure. I can chump it, I guess. He's exerting this time, okay. Flash into Vizier. I can use it on this Shefet monitor so I don't take any unnecessary damage. I guess I can just take. Yeah, I guess I can take this. This is 7, 8, 9. Yeah, it should be fine. And we should swing back for lethal. Actually, I could chomp because he's just going to get back to 7 7 anyway, so. That was um, a good game. Let's move on. All right, five and zero. Oh. Deck is exceeding beyond my expectations. I was hoping to draft an aggro deck with the um, Oketra, but I realized she she does better in a controlling deck, anyways. So um, I'm not sure if the Labyrinth Guardian was the correct pick. Pack two, but we still set up a pretty decent control deck, so not going to complain. Sometimes drafts are just aren't too straightforward, and you just kind of have to um, kind of take a gamble of which direction you want to head towards. Or you can know the set, evaluate the power levels of the uh, archetypes. Um, we can always cycle the Shimmer Scale Drake to maybe hit our white mana. Um, I think this is a fine keep. But I'll definitely be playing Labyrinth Guardian first, perhaps. Put also Mulligan, so um, we kind of have the, a bit of an advantage here. Alright, let's just trade Labyrinth Guardians, I guess. Or just... Or just bounce back with them, so... So Blue Black Control versus, um... Blue White? Hmm, okay, I guess I'll cycle the Shimmer Scale Drake to find my planes end of turn. Yeah, this is gonna be turn 5, so I do need to get my white mana going. I don't mind just taking 3 from this Marauding Bone. Slasher, and then I can block the 2 3 off. I think we just need a cycle to hit our white source, I think. Punk gain back the card that he uh, discarded, he mulligan for. Do need to fight our white, find our white mana eventually? Okay, that's white mana at least. I guess, yeah, now I can cast my Solidary Camel and gain some life, so that's not that bad. And if he kills it, I can just play out Oketra's Avenger. What does this do? At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life, and you scry X where X is the number of zombies you control, okay? Exile target creature from a graveyard created token, that's a copy of it. Okay, so I guess if I 
do this. He's just going to uh, make a zombie. But he's just going to make a zombie anyways. Um, so I think we block it. Okay. Um, yeah, this isn't looking great. Guess we might as well double spell here to be mana efficient. This card is pretty insane. When it dies, return it to the owner's hand at the beginning of the next step. Yeah, I guess it's game over here. Because he can just keep swinging for five and killing my stuff for free. Maybe I should... But next round, at least, maybe Oketro can um, hold this off. For the time being, but um, it's really not good for us. At least the 4-4 doesn't gain haste, but it's still pretty um, pretty broken. Since even Compulsory Rest doesn't deal with this. Since he can always just sacrifice it. Yeah, it's about game over, I think. He can also attack him for 5 for free, because he'll just get back at the end step, so... Yeah, this card is broken. Compulsory Rest. It doesn't matter, right? When he, he's just going to return it, so I think we just play out Oketro here and hope for the best. He can eventually just drain me with the um, Scarab God, and he can also exile his own Marauding Bone, his Marauding Bone Slasher. So, yep, I think it's just a good game. Yeah, I don't think I can beat this. I don't have a way to exile the Scarab God as well, so if I use a card like, um... I need a card like Cast Out to deal with this, or Final Reward, but I'm not in black, and Cast Out is, uh, uncommon. So, yep. Fine losing the first game because, um, it didn't matter anyways. Anyone that plays a Scarab God on Curve is definitely going to win, so... Hope we don't come across that situation again. Because we are in a good record, we're 5-1. and one. Alright, Oketra, okay, and we can play out the Tap Desert and the Labyrinth Guardian, this seems pretty good. Eventually Aerial Guide can help Oketra get across as a double striker, and that's quite strong. Oh, he's going to play out the Desert first because um, there's um, Unquenchable Thirst in this deck. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll be blocking anyways. I don't mind just playing a Labyrinth Guardian. Also, I could have actually just played the Gus Walker and exerted it. Maybe to get in for three, I don't know if that matters. He's definitely going to exert this because, um, yeah, definitely trading for a 2-3 that I can get back is not good for, beneficial for him. So, another Avenger, okay. More Avengers. I guess I'll just play the Aerial Guide and keep this back so he's forced to exert again. I just want to exert so these things stay tapped for the time being. The Vizier is not actually that good against this either because um, he will be able to um, re-exert it, I guess. He can hit me for 6 next turn, so I do need to set up a good blocker like this Oketra eventually. Luckily, blue and white doesn't don't have any spot removal besides, like, tap tricks, so I should be okay. Shafet Dunes. I just played out. Hmm. Shafet Dunes. Hmm. I could trade here, and then next turn I can set something up. Take three in the meantime from the Oketra's Avenger. I gotta play around like an Essence Scatter here, so I think this is okay. I don't mind just trading off the Labyrinth Guardian for this 3-2, since I think the Aerial Guide is a lot more important. Not only as a blocker against Flyers, but can actually help us win and close out the game, so. The Labyrinth Guardian can go, and then we can play out Gus Walker, Flash, and the Vizier to ambush like um, an Avenger. Okay, 
So there goes the... Um, I guess I can flash into Vizier to bounce the Oketra's Avenger. So that's actually not that bad too. This is until the end step, right? Okay, yeah. So I definitely have to do that. Um, but here we're just going to block... Those will serve. Nothing. That, that's not too scary. I can compulsory rest one of these, but I think. Let's just see here. Oh, did I just um? Why, why do I have one open mana up? This doesn't make any sense. Okay, never mind. I'll just compulsory rest here then. Must be a weird glitch. And I can still double block this and cycle away the uh, compelling arguments. Yeah, let's just do that. I can just main phase the Vizier, actually. I don't have to necessarily... Um... Yeah, I can just main phase this so this can come back as a blocker. So that's not as bad as I think it is. And if he attacks with this, I don't mind just double blocking. I do lose my Flyer, so that sucks. But I don't think I can afford to take all this damage. And eventually God Pharaoh's Gift can get it back anyway, so I think I double block here. Out of the fists, okay. Quite annoying. I can make a 1-1. One, one. I guess I can afford to still take 3 here. And then flash into Vizier end of his turn. I mean, even if he uses the Edifice, I can still make 1-1s one, off of the Aketra in response eventually. So, we'll just pass here. I can afford to take three and then Vizier end of turn flashing the um, Oketra's Avenger. Hopefully this doesn't get countered. Because this is the only way I can free Oketra, so... What just happened? Um... Oh, I guess it needs to attack or block, never mind, oops. Yeah, that was a huge misplay. Um, let's just play out land, because I want to activate Oketra twice eventually. Then we can just play off Fanbearer. And I guess I can just attack here. For two. So I can maybe win the game by just making a bunch of 1-1s, hopefully. So I think that's the game plan now. I thought hmm, I thought this could have actually exiled the Oketra, but that's fine. I mean, I don't think I was going to... Um, I don't think I was going to um, make a 1-1 anyway, so I might as well just flash this in as like a 2-2 ground attacker. Opponent is stuck behind on lands, but he, I think he'll eventually get his lands anyways. He curved out pretty nicely this game. Wondering why he's keeping up all his mana for him.
Okay, I guess I can hold off the 3-1 now with the wall, so we're in decent shape still. Um, hopefully there's no flash creature. I guess I won't, I won't even, I guess one damage might matter, so maybe I just attack with the fan bearer. Or still keep it back, maybe. Yeah, let's just keep up, keep back the fan bearer. Actually, I sh uh, accidentally exerted this, so I don't know if that was correct. Yeah, I guess we can start making 1-1s one on the back foot with this Oketra, and then we can block a 3-1. Guess he's going to use the Edifice to maybe tap down the wall. We'll see. But we can eventually outvalue him, out him with Oketra anyways by making a bunch of 1-1s. One But this is going to be a very slow game since he's also gaining life from the compulsory rest. But I think we managed to um, gum up the ground quite nicely. Cartouche, okay, we're definitely tapping this down. Hope I make more, get more lands, okay. That, that is a tap land, however. I still think I need to play it here. Sure. Um, let's see. Let's, until your next turn. I guess that's only until his next turn. So let's see. Hmm. Maybe I can let this resolve. No, it's until his next turn. So yeah, I guess I, I might as well activate it. Ping him for one. Get him for four. And I'll keep the fan bearer back to block to tap down the 4 2. And then I can make a 1 1. I guess this can block now, never mind. So I think the opponent kind of misread it. I don't mind trading a 1 1 for his 1 1. Because this is going to be a nuisance later, anyways. Another Avenger, okay. Guess I can still play out the Camel. I could tap this down and get in for a ton, but I don't mind just trading here. Let's move to combat. I mean, I guess I can still block the 3-1 here, and then I guess I can still chump. But I'd rather gain life, so um, I think I'm going to block the one without first strike. Although the first strike can be pretty scary if he has two double pump tricks with it. But he would definitely need double mighty leap to get in for first strike damage. Yeah, I guess I can afford to take four still. It's not the end of the world. And aerial guide, okay. Not what I wanted to see, but um, I guess I can attack with a solitary camel and gain some life or just out, out, out aggro him. Hopefully, let's just get in there. Because aerial guide is going to be the bane of my existence if he manages to survive this. So 
So now what? <laughs> I guess I can sack this to pump up my team. I think I have to do that. Let's just do it. Do I want to keep the chef at dunes? This probably doesn't matter. Yeah, I think I, I think I need the extra land. Let's just pump our team now. Yeah, we got him. All right, final boss. Jeez, that that game was pretty close. But quite happy that the opponent invested so much into these Catra's Avengers that we managed to um, stall stall out with the um, even with the with the um, with the activated ability of Oketra. I mean, we only we only used it once, so um, I don't know. I just had to play that very proficiently. So, anyways, we're just gonna. Um, do an overview of this deck. I'm not really explaining this too well, sorry. Um, let's see, um, 17 lands. Um, in terms of interaction, we have double fan bearer, compulsory rest, um, unquenchable thirst, um, and um, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, yeah, those are only like our only four removal spells. Um, in terms of um, late game win conditions, we have. Um, Double Stripe Riverwinder, God Pharaoh's Gift, Shimmer Scale Drake, Crested Sunmare, um, with the Solidary Camel if we get that going, um, and some good flyers on four, um, Top Crop Elites, Curator Mysteries, and then Oketra, which is a powerful bomb. Um, so the game plan is basically just um, survive in the early game, essentially, and get to the late game. And we just have a lot of powerful bombs in the late game, so it's fine um, having um, these cycling spells that you rather won't really main deck unless you're in black blue um since the cycling synergies mostly um mostly perform best in black blue um usually it's not recommended to throw a bunch of cycling cards in a uh, white blue embalmed deck but in this scenario our deck isn't really looking to embalm it's almost like it's trying to be white black i mean it's trying to be trying to be black blue but um, we just had to um stick with white due to the powerhouse of um, Oketra the True. So regardless, the cycling cards are just there just to um, synergize with our Curator of Mysteries. Um, it's, it's to um, cycle and get through the deck quickly for the God Pharaoh's Gift and Oketra the True, um, since um, we really have enough decent ground blockers in the early game to help stabilize. And then um, our game plan is just essentially get to our late game bombs um, and then, yeah, looking at the sideboard, I could have considered a Windsor Rebuke, but the self-mill can be a little bit too disastrous unless you have a lot of good embalm creatures, which we don't. We only have a Labyrinth Guardian that can embalm. We don't have any Avon um, Initiates or anything else. So, um, the embalm synergies, so milling ourselves is not that great, especially since we don't have any Graveyard Recursion. Spell Weaver Eternal, we don't have too many um, non-creature spells. Hecma Sentinels, 3 mana, 2, 3, I don't think is a good ground blocker. Um, even with a little bit of cycling synergy, I don't think it's that great. So I'd rather just play the Camel, which can gain us life. Vizier, that can flash in instant speed, and the uh, viz and the other Vizier of Tumbling Sands, which can help us ramp. So yeah, overall, pretty fine deck. Uh, we managed to get to 6-1 with this. Um, so I only have 15 minutes of recording time, so I'm not going to waste any more time here. And I'm just going to uh, move on to the next game. Uh, also, these deserts really help with the Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs and the Unquenchable Thirst. So let's move on to the final boss. Um, let's add this to our collection. I think I need to take a snapshot of this. Wait, wait, wait one moment. Right, so next game, hopefully this won't be 15 minutes long, but... Um, I hope I don't really want to make a part two video, so let's unless I lose the next game, I'm definitely gonna make a part two video. But um, let's just nail this final boss into the coffin, so we can um, essentially just um, get our nice seven wins to show off. Right, fan bearer on one. I'll lose a life, but it's okay. I think I can keep this. Don't really like losing life, but um, it is what I have to do here. Okay. 
Well, I can trade a fan bear for that. I don't know if I want to. It's actually not that bad. Like, I already lost a life, so I might as well trade this off. Although, the Labyrinth Garden can block this pretty nicely, so I could just take a turn off here. Yeah, I think the fan bear might be more useful in the late game, so... It's our only way to, way to deal with big bombs, so... Don't mind just playing the Labyrinth Guardian here. If he does have the Splendid Agony, I'll get punished. Yeah, impeccable timing, sure. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked, that was not great. Um, okay, now Cartouche, mm, that's annoying, so I don't mind just Compulsory Resting this. I don't want to take too much damage here. And I also missed the land drop, so... He's probably going to stack this end of turn. And he didn't. Okay. At 13 life at, with two lands, this isn't looking great for me. But he did just pass a turn doing nothing, so... I'll take that. I'm losing a hefty amount of life just playing this, so I think I should just stay back in case he has another impeccable timing. Because I'm losing a lot of life here with this Chefet Dunes, unfortunately. And hopefully I can climb back up with the Solidary Camel. Talk Elite just being annoying here. Um, yeah, I'll just play out the Solidary Camel. I just need to start connecting and gaining life here. Just attack with both. Could have kept up one for to block the ground, but I think it's okay here. I actually don't mind him just exerting this. And taking four, and then I can swing back. Supply caravan, I guess that's just gonna hold the fort for a while. Okay, so now I guess I can just play out the curator on curve. And then eventually, maybe I can cast the aerial guide and start flying over the solidary camel. I could have also exert this and get him for three, which might have been important. Okay. Guess I don't mind just taking six. Yeah, let's trade one off. Eh. Yeah, let's trade. I don't really want to, um... Well, at least this trades. He can cast this free. I can attack. He'll just go for a double block maybe. Or he's just going to trade it off. Um, so this doesn't look great for me. Um, I think I offered a trade here. Since he can just untap with this, he's just going to take it. So that's fine. The Labyrinth Guardian isn't bad. Sure. I think it's just consistent. I mean, I guess the arrow guide is better since I can fly over. I can afford to take maybe um, a couple points of damage. And I might as well just cycle away this striped river winder. Opponent's banking on the fact that he might get a removal spell, but... I think I'm fine. I don't think this is lethal unless he finds, like, a pump spell. I can actually just trade here, which isn't bad, since this can eventually fly over. Maybe it's just better to just get the value trade. I can still get three, three back, gain three back next turn. That's pretty annoying. Do I trade here? I think I'm forced to. Yeah, I think I'm forced to trade. I don't really want him to inflict one against me. I guess this is lethal unless I block the 3-3. Three, three. I, I, I definitely think I messed this game up. Yeah, I definitely think I messed this game up. I should have maybe just traded here instead of taking the 1 power. Yeah. Alright. Um... Well, that, that lasted very quickly, so I think I have 9 minutes to still record and do the final match, so...
Never mind. Let, let me just make a part two video.